Welcome to Marriage Mondays with the Kings. I'm Kenya. And I'm Shan. And, and we, we are, are the Kings. Kings. Happy Monday, you all. Thank you so much for joining us. We say that every week, taking time out of your schedule to be right here with us for another show of Marriage Mondays with the Kings. Now, you know, we cannot begin this show without thanking our sponsors. First up, we have Christian Humor Forest slash Inspiration. This is the group that is designed to uplift, inspire, and bring humor to everyday life in a Christian way. If you're into social media, please check them out simply by going to search them on Facebook at Christian Humor Forest slash Inspiration. Do you desire individual, relational, premarital, or marriage counseling? Are you thinking about starting your counseling journey to becoming a better you? Ear to hear counseling and consulting can help. We offer telehealth services across the state of Texas, therapy in the comforts of your own environment. Now accepting new clients. Visit their website at ear to hear counseling.com or call 254 450 2950. Start today and let us be your ear to hear. If you are an organization or business and would like to be promoted during our broadcast, or on KRGN 98.5 FM, please contact them at mykrgn.com or call 254-213-1588. So what we would like to do at this time, and we open up our show each week with a word of prayer, we ask if you are safely able to do so, if you could please bow your head with us as we go before the Lord in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for yet another day, dear God. Another day that you found to us to be fit to be able to wake up this morning, to be able to go throughout our day, to be able to make it to our destination safely. Dear God, just putting breath in our bodies. For that, we say thank you, and we do not take for granted. Dear God, we lift up each and every individual to you right now in the name of Jesus, dear God, under the sounds of our voice, dear God, those who just need strength, dear God, those who are going through, those who have lost loved ones, we ask that you would just give them strength and comfort during this season. We know that the holiday season may not be the best time for most, dear God, but we ask that you would just help us, Lord God, that you would just show us, dear God, that you are with us, that you have your angels to comfort us during this time. Dear God, we lift up marriages to you. We lift up families, dear God, as individuals got together um, just recently for the Thanksgiving holiday, dear God, those who were able to get together, dear God, we thank you for that time. We ask that you would just continue to bring marriages together, families together, those who are single, dear Dear God, we ask that you would just continue to order our steps. Dear God, we lift up leaders to you around the world, dear God. In the name of Jesus, we ask that they would just turn from their own thoughts and their processes of doing things and turn to you, dear God, that they would kneel down to you, dear God, asking that you would order their, their steps as their people are being led and they are leading your people, dear God. Dear God, the show that we're going to talk about on tonight, we ask that you will be in the midst, dear God, that you will continue to strengthen Kenya and I, dear God. Dear God, anything that the enemy tries to bring against us from delivering the word to your people, dear God, we ask that you would just step in like never before, dear God. Dear God, we ask that this would be an encouraging word, dear God. Those who are listening, dear God, that they will be encouraged, dear God, and that individuals, us just as individuals, that we desire to do better, that we desire to connect with one another, dear God, because we know that everything is not of the enemy, but we ask that you would order our steps, that we would come together and closer as a people to support each other. We ask that you will bless the station of KRGN, dear God, everyone that is on the airways of KRGN, that everything that is spoken is of you and not of us, dear God, so that your people will be edified recharge and built up in the name of Jesus. Dear God, thank you for what you are going to do in this show, dear God, and what you are going to do in our lives, not just in 2023, but right now, dear God. We pray and ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And our foundational scripture for the show is Matthew, the 19th chapter and the sixth verse, and it reads, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God is joined together, let no one separate. And our motto here for Marriage Mondays with the Kings is helping to build stronger marriages, which leads to stronger families and stronger communities. And our disclaimer, views expressed on this show are those of the host, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. This station holds no responsibility 
responsibility or validity of accuracy of information on this show. And please keep in mind that although we are counseling professionals, the information shared on our show is for ministry educational purposes only. Also note that topics discussed are reflective of supporters who contact us desiring to have a deeper knowledge of these topics. No information is shared on our show based upon our counseling experiences. Topics are for the encouragement of marriages, families, and communities as God desire for us to minister. And so moving forward in today's show, we're just going to go ahead and throw today's topic out there. Today's topic is single until you are married. Once mm -hmm. again, today's topic is single until you are married. And so to kind of give you all a little bit of background, if you will, we put this question out. So for those of you who are listening via radio, if you desire to watch tonight's show, please head over to Marriage Mondays with the Kings YouTube channel. So let me put that out there. Um, if you cannot view it live, you would have to subscribe first, okay? So make sure you do that if you would like to watch us live for tonight's show. Now, this came about because there has been a great debate in the last couple of months, maybe two to three months, is are you single until you are married? So of course, Kenya and I is gonna break this thing down from a lot of different areas. We'll probably answer it from our own perspectives. You know, we know everybody's not gonna agree with what we are saying but again, we're going to look at this from all angles. So single until you are married. You can go to your social medias. You can put this in the search and you will see so much debate on this. So what is, what is your thoughts when it comes to this, Mr. King? Well, you know, I think with anything um, you deal with any specific topic, one of the first things that you have to start to do is define what you're talking about. Okay. And so when you think about single versus being married, what, what is the true definition? So when I went in and I looked up the definition of single, it says it is an individual person or thing rather than a part or a pair or a group. Hmm. And it says to choose someone or something from a group of special treatment, you're actually singling that individual out. Okay. Then I went on and I looked up the word married. Hmm. And in dictionary.com, married is defined as united in wedlock, wedded of or relating to marriage or marriage persons hmm. or conjugal, created from components of two or more authentic pieces. And that's okay. what marriage uh, means. Uh, when you go on and think about it from a legal perspective, uh, the definition of marriage that I looked up said is two individuals come together in a relationship from a legal aspect, meaning that those individuals have a marriage license and they have performed that marriage ceremony from a legal standpoint. And then those individuals are married and no longer single. Hmm. And so with the different sides of the debate, um, let me just jump into it like I always do. Now, I want to look at this from uh, every day, a, a 2000 and what are we, 2020, 2022 standpoint. But then also I want to look at it from a biblical standpoint. I want to reflect some of the things in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. some of the things that we've heard, you know, growing up in the church mm -hmm. or whatnot. Now, single into Mary, I'm going to start off by saying this, and we are not trying to bust up anybody's situation, <laughs> but what I would do, do I think individuals are single until you're married? Yes, I do. This is Shan speaking. The reason why I say that is because what I see is a lot of individuals commit themselves um, unknowingly, mm -hmm. I guess you can say to one another, and then get mad. You commit yourself in your mind, but then you get mad when it, when it doesn't turn out the way that you think it should. Now, I'm equal opportunity, so I'm going to talk to the women, I'm going to talk to the men, single, married, whatever, and we do have some comments as well that I'll be reading off as well. So what I mean by that is that sometimes, ladies, let's be honest, whether you're married or you're single, what we tend to do is think in our minds, and I've heard individuals say this, well, how are you supposed to know if you're going to fit with each other unless you live with each other, you move in with each other, whatever the case may be. Where I think we set ourselves up as individuals is that we don't have the conversation to ask, what are we doing right now? Where are we at? And so going back to the ladies, what we would tend to do we move in with an individual and some, not all, 
Some mindset is, well, I want to show him that I am wife material. I want to show him that I can take care of his children. I can cook for him. He could come home to a peaceful home and all these things. And so you move in, but your intention in your mind is to end goal become wife is the intention. That may not be his intention because y'all haven't had the conversation. So that's where a lot of women who find themselves in this situation get upset. Because your mind is saying, end goal is wifey. I'm going to show him that I could do this. But then you end up getting big mad when you're 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 20 years down the line. And y'all still living together. And you still trying to prove that you wife, Mr. King. Yeah, you know, I think that um, for a lot of individuals, um, dealing from a societal standpoint, they consider themselves single mm. until that point when they may become engaged. Okay. And for a lot of individuals, they will say, well, during this time frame, we're getting to know each other. We're just dating. Uh, we're, we're enjoying one another's company. Yes, I like this person, but it's not serious. Mm -hmm. And then once it starts to get a, as serious as they say, and someone says, hey, I'm going to get down on me and put a ring on it. Then that person kind of says, look, I'm off the market. Uh, I'm not married all the way yet, but I'm, I'm in a committed relationship and I want to work towards that marriage uh standpoint okay. now technically until you say wedding vows you do this from a legal perspective you're still married mm -hmm. i think the biggest picture you're that still we, married or single oh you're still single until mm -hmm. you're, you're married uh, you actually do the wedding vows i think the big problem that we have in society today is for everyone is putting their own spin on being single married engaged or whatever the case may be mm -hmm. okay. i think people play it for their own benefit mm. They play it for their own benefit. And, mm. and I'm like my wife. I'm not going to beat up women. I'm not going to beat up men. I'm going to hit y'all equally. Right, right, And so right. let's just say you have a young lady who is dating a, a young man, and they're saying they're in a relationship with each other. Mm -hmm. But then she goes off and starts flirting, or she's going out with other men and things of that nature. And her excuse is, well, hey, I'm single. I ain't got no ring on my finger. Right. Mm. And, and he's supposed to be okay with that. But then when he does it, you ain't single. We're in a relationship. You're mm. supposed to be committed to me and vice versa. It can be men doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I think what we have to start doing is we have to quit applying marriage principles in a single mindset. Come on, come on, come on. Let's get into because it. Because you have to make up your mind. If I'm dating someone for a specific reason, I need to be dating them for with an intent or is this going towards marriage? Mm. And if it's not, then you break that thing off and you keep going until you find that person that you're with. Right. But what we want to do is, like my wife was saying, is we want to bring a person into a relationship and make them commit to something as though they're married, right, but right, we're not right. going to hold that same commitment. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it's easy to throw out there when you're called up in the wrong by saying, oh, well, I'm single. I'm not committed to you. Right. You know, and, and it's easy for you to use that as a scapegoat to satisfy your own pleasures, your own desires, or whatever it is that you're trying to uh, take hold of. Mm -hmm. And I think the big thing that we have to understand is the two people that are involved in need to communicate in a manner where they both understand where are we at in this relationship. Right, 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 right. Are we right. just dating and going along to see how this is going to progress in the future and we're going to take it step by step? Mm. Are we dating at the fact that, hey, I don't think nobody else is out there is going to take me uh, off of the, the single block and make me, so I'm just going to roll with you until whatever goes on. And like my wife said, that's when you end up with somebody for eight, nine, ten years. You have two or three kids. You're living with each other, paying bills with each other and all that stuff. You're basically living the married lifestyle you just ain't got the ring or the legal the legal paperwork to right. say that you're married so why not go ahead and do it you're already doing everything else mm, you know that's a good question because there have been a lot of uh women that i've spoke with friends lady friends and stuff like that mm -hmm. and we had this conversation now, of course this is no judgment for anybody doing whatever you're doing you know whatever the case may be because the word of god says judge not lest ye be judged. So we're not judging, but just having a conversation. And I think that's the problem. A lot of people are not, like you said, like what we were saying earlier, having the conversation. So the thing is, if somebody was to ask me, and even going back, you tell me we almost on 24 years of marriage. So going back to when I was 20, um, and I even thought about Kenya and I, um, I'm the type of person that I would want to know because I asked a lot of questions. Y'all know this. Where are we at right now? What is it that we're doing? And so growing up in the church, we grew up in the Baptist church. One of the things that the terms that the old people used to say, and this is probably 
regardless of the denomination, mm-hmm. is when you living together and you ain't married, you what? You're single. You're shacking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shacking up. You're single mm-hmm. and you're shacking. Mm-hmm. And then they say shacking is not of God, you know, all the things. Now I'm going to say this, because one of the things that I purpose to do is anything that I say ensure that it, li- it truly lines up with the word of God. So what I would encourage you all to do is go and do a second Timothy two and 15, mm-hmm. go and search out the scriptures. What is God telling you about this topic through his word? Um, I'm just going to be honest. One of the things that you'll find out when you really search the scripture and exergy the text for yourself is a lot of things that you've been taught growing up. It's not what the word of God say. Mm-hmm. So this is why we encourage you all to do that. Now, I know when I was researching the Old Testament and I was looking at court. Now, this is something that the older um, people used to say as well. So my question, I guess, to the 2022 individuals is where do you find time to court if you just meet two weeks later or a month later, you're moving in with each other? Where do you find time to actually truly get to know each other? Now, the reason why I ask this question is this. So let's go back to the scenario that I used of a single woman who in her mind is saying, or even for a guy, it can work both ways to say, but I'm going to use speaking from the aspect of a woman to say, hey, I I can show him that I could be a good wife. I can create a good home for him. So he want to move in, then we're going to move in. Where do you take the time to get to know each other? Because nine times out of 10, to be honest, when you move like that, (laughs) when you move like that, you're putting your best, you're putting the representative on. We've mm-hmm. spoken about the representative. That's something that a lady I know used to always say. You're putting the representative, which means the best foot forward. You're pu- Some may even put on this facade, mm-hmm. if you will, to, oh yeah, you know, I'm sure I'm getting up, I'm gonna cook every day, I'm gonna do this. Baby, let me tell you this, that facade is gonna wear out and it may even turn to anger. So having that conversation say, what are we doing right now? If you're dating, For those who are single, I don't care if you're in your 20s or you in your 50s. When you have the conversation with that person, are we just friends or are we just dating? One of the things that I love that our aunt says that she taught her children was this. Stop giving people titles. That's what she said. Stop giving people titles. So you got the girlfriend and the boyfriend title. Mm -hmm. What is that? Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Is that saying that we're committing to each other and we're just going to be with solely each other or, or no, we, you don't, we're not going to label. I'm not going to label him, my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. No, we are just good friends. We may get together from time to time, go out to eat. We may go on, you know, on a date or whatever, but we ain't nothing else beside that. So then say you decide that, okay, we're courting. We're getting to know each other. We're actually considering each other. I guess you could say as boyfriend and girlfriend. Again, having that conversation, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. We're not to talk to any other people. We're not to see, because see what I'm seeing is that individuals are jumping into commitment in their minds, but they're not totally committing to each other. So to me, from a spiritual aspect, when it comes to marriage, I think about the commitment that I made to my husband on our wedding day, which you true. Somebody just said it in their spirit. You got people who commit before God, they commit to each other and they don't hold on to commitment. Well, what that tells me is that individual got commitment issues. Okay. But we don't want to talk about that because we just want to whisk past everything, get to where we think we should be in our mind, in our lives. And then we haven't had the conversation but you didn't take time to get to know if the person that you are potentially going to be committed to have commitment issues. So what we tend to do is we blame the person that we are dating or we committed ourselves to in our mind or even in marriage. You committed to your husband, you committed to your wife, you know, ask yourself as as an individual, don't blame your husband, your wife, because we're quick to point the finger. Did you take the time that you needed to take to actually get to know this person, properly get to know them, get to know their likes and their dislikes, get to know if they have commitment issues, if they have anger issues and things like that. What we do is we're microwaving relationships going straight to marriage or, and, or basically, because this is my question. So 
if say me and Kenya weren't married, right? And I'm gonna get his example and I know he got something, but say we were not married and say that we decided to move in with each other. I got questions. So are we roommates? Are we going 50 50 on these bills? What are we doing? And yes, there are people who are married and they live like they're roommates. Mm -hmm. So I'm not trying to bag on the single people. We're just keeping it honest. What is this situation that we are in? Because guess what? When you have the conversation up front, you tend to hurt your own feelings less. Mm -hmm. Your feelings get hurt when you don't do the things that you need to do and have the adult conversation to seek understanding. Yeah, and I, I think um, one of the things we really have to to understand as individuals, once again, is that that communication aspect and talking to one another to figure where are we at in this relationship? Mm. Uh, what do you consider single to be? What do you consider the relationship when it's deeper and we're talking about engagement and things of that nature? Right. You know, we can flip back and go to the Old Testament, go back to uh, um, Chronicles, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I want to say King of Solom. I think he had a daughter. And um, there was an individual that really loved her. Mm -hmm. But this individual uh, had, uh, I want to say, 18 wives and 16, I mean, I'm sorry, 18 wives and maybe about 60 concubines. Mm -hmm. Now, how do I this tie this in? How do stuff. I tie this in with this Come stuff on. today? See, Come a on, lot man. of y'all are wandering around wanting to be a wife, but you're really acting like a concubine. Mm -hmm. You're just being mm -hmm. strong alone for what you can do for a person sexually mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. being in a committed relationship for marriage, right? After right, marriage, right, right? And so, a lot of people, well, people ask me that question why do I bring it up like that? Well, because a lot of societies and a lot of societies around the world. Once a man has sex with a woman, mm -hmm. a lot of them consider that marriage. But in the Bible, it says if you have sex before marriage, that's considered sexual immorality. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'm not knocking anybody. We live in different times and things uh, as we go along. But once again, we keep applying a lot of these marriage principles to a single lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So the important thing to understand is both people have to get on the same sheet of music on the same accord to determine which way are we going? Mm -hmm. You can't have one ox pulling to the left and one pulling to the right because the fields never get plowed with straight rows. Right, right, What right. are your intentions? Mm -hmm. what, what, do you, what do you want this to be? What is the end state? And I truly believe that if people really had those um, conversations early on, as well as throughout their relationship, we wouldn't have individuals in these situations where they're staying with somebody eight, nine, 10 years and someone keeps stringing them along. Just be honest up front as to what it is right. that you want and what direction that you're going in. And you don't have to play games with individuals. Mm. See, a lot of people are looking at the word single and married. And the only thing it is, is a game to them. Mm -hmm. See, once you tie that knot, all games are off. Right, right, right. All right. games are off. And for a lot of, is not a game. Right. And for a lot of people, this is what they want to do. Mm. And, and I'm going to equate this in, in the form of an analogy. Okay. Um, doesn't matter whatever sport you play. At some point in time, you have to practice. Mm. You have to develop skills. You have to right. do certain things. You have to learn how to read the defense, learn how to read the offense. Marriage is the same way. So I don't knock people if they're living with one another and they're figuring things out as they go and they want to go towards marriage because in a sense, that's like practice. Mm. But in that practice, you can't cheat in practice because that's going to want to make you cheat in the game. Some of y'all didn't get that. Mm. You can't cheat in practice because that's going to make you want to cheat in the game. Wow. And so when you're applying these principles, when it comes to marriage, if you're saying you're together, then be with that one individual. Don't be with this one person. And when they make you mad, you don't get what you want. You can run back to Stevie around the corner. He's mm -hmm. going to make you feel good and give you what you want. Then you run back to that person because he's the one that's paying the bills and doing all the stuff that you really, really need. Mm -hmm. and, and those are the things that I think that we get confused with. Uh, we have to spend some time with one another. We got to get to know each other to see if this is where I want to be with you for the rest of my life. Right. But what we can't do is pick and choose. Right, right, right. If right. you're going to be committed, then be committed in that relationship as if you were married and if things don't work out, then you move on. Mm -hmm. But all too often, people want to just do what they want to do to make them feel good. And when something goes wrong with them, then I can jump and go do what I want to do. And if we make up, then we come back. Mm -hmm. That's not the way the game is supposed to be played. Right. We need to be committed to that individual in a relationship. And if things go south, it doesn't work out, then you agree to move your, move on and go your separate ways and you go on to the next uh, individual. But right. we can't have our cake and eat it too. Mm. And so I'm going to go ahead and read a comment. And this is from an individual who is single. Um, and so the question was put out there, are you single until you're married? And she says, I agree. 
I was married and now single again after divorcing an abusive spouse. When a man is serious enough about me to treat slash love me right and marry me with no hitting agenda, mm. then and only then will I consider myself no longer single. Now, let me read that last part again, because it did something for me. When a man is serious enough to uh, uh, serious enough about me to treat slash love me right and marry me with no hidden agenda then and only then will I consider myself no longer single and so I think that's amazing because this is a comment from somebody who's single this is a comment who was married before and now she is single again this individual but that's the thing that gets me is that again like you were saying this again mm -hmm. and so for me Let's go back because some, oh, it's easy for y'all to say y'all been married 24 years, whatever. I'm just going to be honest, even looking back in retrospect. One of the things that my husband told me, and he says it all the time, is men know what they want. Men know what they want. And I think you told me something to the fact of it don't take a man a long time to figure out what they want. What? How yeah. did you say it? Basically, what I, I explained is that I knew what I wanted in her, and I wasn't going to play around by trying to drag things out. I, I kind of felt that she was the one I knew what I wanted in life. We had talked about what she wanted in life and things just kind of, you know, mirrored up. And I figured, well, then this is the one you've got the qualities and I'm looking for this, that, and other. Mm -hmm. It's just me. I'm not saying I'm right. Um, but I believe when a man sees something that he really wants, he goes for it. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to string it along because I believe if you're stringing something along, there's a reason why you're doing that. Maybe that's not what you really want. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're nervous. You're afraid of commitment. Maybe there's some trust issues that are there, but for whatever it is, when you know you really want something, you go for it. And I'm going to give you an example, um, kind of like a, um, I don't know, not, not so much of a storyline, but just imagine when you see a man and he's thinking about getting a new car. Mm -hmm. Now, he may go on the internet and he may um, check out all the uh, specifications of that car, may run it through insurance to see how my insurance is. He goes through all that stuff to say, you know what, I really want that car. And then that person goes and, and they make up their mind they're going to get it or they're not. Right. Women are no different. I'm not trying to equate you to cars or anything, but a man will know when he goes and sees the specifications. And let's just say sometimes it's going to be from a physical standpoint. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's going to be from a mental standpoint. It should be a mixture. I'm, I'm hoping of both mm -hmm. to say you've got everything I want. I don't have to worry about this, this, that and the other. Uh, let's go ahead and we go do this. I don't even have to go try to test drive that because I know somebody got that going through my the, mm -hmm. their mind right now. It's not about the test drive. It's about you doing your homework with the car that you have seen and that you have in front of you to decide, yeah, this is the car that I want. Right. And, and I'm going on from there. Mm. Uh, but I, I feel as though what my wife was just reading about the young lady that sent that in, a lot of that goes on with individuals in relationships. A lot of it is all about hidden agendas. Mm. Even if the people end up getting married. Right, right. And I, right. I give you examples. I've known individuals who are very good at sports males uh, in high school and college and a young lady may have hooked up with them and say well you know what this is my free ride because if this person goes to the nba the nfl or whatever if they go to a business school and end up working on wall street doesn't matter right. it's all about the benefit that i want it ain't necessarily about that individual i need you to get me to where i want to be mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you have to understand once again the two becoming one right, right in my right. mind you quit being single when the two become one. Mm. And sometimes, even if you're operating in that area as from a single standpoint, if me and my wife are dating and we're completely uh, devoted to one another, we're not out there looking for anyone else. And we've said we've crossed that line where we're being serious, then everything else is off. We're not married. We're still single, but I'm going to apply the, the correct principles of I'm not going out with this person. I'm not messing with that person. I'm not running to the clubs like I used to. I'm not running down to the strip club because I'm showing her what it is that she needs to see as me as her potential future husband. Right, right. Because a lot of people, what they're going to do, they're going to do all that up until the night before they get married. Then they have the bachelor's party and do whatever they want to do. And then they decide, well, from this point on, I'm married. I'm trying to show you that ahead of time what you got to look forward to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that you don't have to worry about it. And yes, if I'm going to act right or get myself right once the ring is on the finger. Right. Sometimes we have to show people exactly who we are, not that representation, 
but who we really are ahead of time because you don't want to string anybody along and give them a false sense of security, a false sense of hope, and then drop them off on the side of the road and say, well, you know what, find your way back to where you came from. Right, right. That is so true. And so the this conversation we're having on tonight, just like we always say, eat the meat and spit out the bones. Mm -hmm. Everything we say may not be for you. And one of the things that we do as a society in today's time is we get easily offended by what we hear that hits a nerve, which is actually something where God might be like, mm, it's called conviction is what it's called. That's what it was called. We was, you know, coming up in church. We know it to be conviction where God is convicting us. Not that we are trying to point the finger and judge you. Some of us, ooh, that, that sounds good. Some of us mm -hmm. can get conviction and judgment mixed up, okay? So with that being said, I would like to look at it, look at this from a biblical standpoint. Those of us who consider ourselves believers, we've shared this before on the show, but in the Old Testament and not necessarily, like when you really get out this strong concordance and you really try to learn about how they did things and their time back in the day, I say to use it as an example and apply it to our lives in this day and time, we understand that we are not living just like they was back in uh, a, what was it? Uh, uh, BC. Yeah, so that was before, before Christ in mm -hmm. AD after Christ's death. You know what I'm saying? So with that, just kind of getting a, a idea. So for me, I would go back and look at how they did things back in the day. It even spoke about in the old Testament, how the guy would come to the father and basically, that reminded me of how now in our day and time, which people probably don't do it anymore, where you go as a guy and you ask for that young lady's hand in marriage when you're considering marrying her. Mm -hmm. When you go out of respect, let me talk about this, and have that conversation with the father of the person in whom that you are marrying, you get their blessing, mm -hmm. if you will. People don't do that anymore. You just go do whatever the case may be. Hey, I mean, to each their own. If you didn't do it, that's you. However, there was a time of courting. So in that time that the guy came and he spoke to the, the father of the person he wanted to marry, the father's trying to make sure, are you able to take care of my daughter? Mm -hmm. The way that I've been, do you have a home? Because I will be releasing her from our home, allowing her to marry you in a sense, and that you will be able to provide for her her leave and cleave leave and cleave mm -hmm. okay that me as a father would not have to worry that my daughter will not have a roof over her head because while you all are courting and getting to know each other then i'm sitting up her checking these things out mm -hmm. you know to make sure and yeah we get it we have a lot of people they've been married they've divorced they desire to be remarried you have your own thing going on whatever the case now for me shane I've learned, you know, a lot over the years. I ain't saying that I know everything. But for me personally, if I was in a situation today, I was not married to my husband. Say I had my own, the guy got his own. We're going to have to date. We're going to have to date. You be over in your area. For me, I personally am not worried about, well, let me test this out and see how it works. Let's live together and this and this and this. Because in the court in time, you getting to know me, you can come over and visit where I stay. You can see how I operate. I'm clean. I like things like this. I can come to your location and see how you are. You know what I'm saying? I can kind of check things out, see how you interact with your family, see how y'all bond. Do y'all have a relationship, you know, and things of that nature. So there are some things, in my opinion, that you can learn about the person that you are dating if you decide to move to that level without totally having to move in with each other. Because if we keep it real in the, in the 2000s, there are a lot of people who are stuck right now mm -hmm. because you made that decision to move in with each other. You're doing, like Kenya said, everything except for the ring on your finger. And then there are people that I heard to say, females that is, let me go back to the females, that say, well, I don't want to be married. I'm fine living the way we are, but you lying. Mm -hmm. You lying. You really do desire to be married. If he, for the most part, now this ain't everybody, but if he got down on his knee and popped a question today, more than likely you will probably say yes, unless there are some underlining things. But for Shan, what are we doing right now? 
that's where I'm at. When me and Kenya was talking, we sat down, we had the conversations. He told me how his family was. I it was a different dynamic for us because we were both in the military. We were both stationed in Germany at that time, but we had the conversation. Once we committed to each other as boyfriend, girlfriend, if you will, then that's just, that's what it was. We were committed to each other until we got married. Um, but a lot of people say, well, I'm cool with just being single. Hey, even the Bible talk about it. Everybody's not going to get married mm -hmm. or whatever. But if that's you, that's you. But for me, I understand that society shows marriage as you got the legalities and, you know, God forbid something happened to me or my husband, then as the spouse, you get this, that, and the other is certain things. Now they're in the throne, all these other uh, specifics on it, loopholes, if you will. However, to be able, again, to go before God, to recite my wedding vows to my husband in a spiritual commitment before God, before the, the pastor or, you know, the person that married us, before friends and family, that thing right there was something else to me. That is a spiritual commitment that I made to my husband and a spiritual commitment that we both made to God. God, each other, husband and wife. So we committed to him. Look at this triangle for those of you who are watching and we committed to each other triangle the three of us is in this thing god husband and wife so that's what i think about i do think you're single you know until you so you get married that's just my thought i mean yeah I, I believe um you know fairly similar to the same i think a lot of individuals and and i'm gonna show you guys this in an example okay uh, single goes out the window rather early believe it or not mm, okay uh, when you meet someone let's say they're they're single let's say I don't know Shan, but we met and mm -hmm. I said, Hey, you know, uh, how are you doing? Fine. We start talking this day. Another, you know, do you have a boyfriend? You, may, you know, no, uh, I'm, I'm single. All right. She is single. Mm -hmm. We start going out for a while. Seem like things are going to some way. That word single goes out the window real fast because the next thing you say is I'm in a, a relationship. Mm, so you committed to a relationship so now you're committed to a relationship okay. and they throw that single out there see a lot of for a lot of people when they're with that person and they're figuring things out and things are going well or whatever the case may be they don't think about being single anymore they're saying they're in a relationship mm -hmm. and i think in that person's mind they're saying this could potentially be marriage but we still got some work that we got to do. We still got some things that we got to figure out. Right. So I think single goes out really quickly. When you start talking about being committed, you're seeing each other on a regular basis. You're doing mm -hmm. a lot of stuff, you know, with each other. People will say, I'm in a relationship. Right. Which means you're already practicing, if you will, for that next step. Hopefully that will be marriage. Mm -hmm. And I think for a lot of individuals, it goes the same way. Let's say my wife and I, well, let's say my girlfriend, we're dating each other. A uh, guy comes up and says, hey, ma'am, how you doing? You know, you really look nice. You know, sir, I'm sorry I'm in a relationship. You didn't say you were single. Mm. You see how people, and, and I'm not trying to play devil's advocate, mm. but that's mm. usually mm. how things go in our society. They'll say, well, I'm in a relationship. Right. Then what's the next thing? He goes say, well, are you serious? Are mm. you committed? See, now you got to start looking at all those things that are there because technically you're still single. Mm. But what is your response going to be? Mm. Your response could be yes. Technically, from a legal standpoint, I'm still single, but I'm committed to that individual because I think we're going somewhere. Mm. And I think that's what causes a lot of problems in relationships is that we understand that we're single. We're moving towards that point where we want it to be greater and, but we want that commitment. We want the uh, honesty. We want a person to not be uh, sleeping with anybody else. We're tying all that to marriage, Right. But technically, you're still single. Mm. And then you have those individuals that say that same thing. Well, I'm single. I can go see whoever I want to, but I still expect you to be there when I get back. Mm. Or can you forgive me for what I'm doing, but I don't want you to do, of course, the, the same thing. Mm. So once again, this I believe this thing all boils down to communication. Right. Expectation. Right. What is it that you view single as being? When do you consider something to be as in a, a serious, committed relationship? Mm -hmm. And then once you become engaged and you're moving towards marriage, yes, you're still single from a legal standpoint, but how are you carrying yourself for that individual that you say you love and that you want to be with? Mm -hmm. I think it all boils down to communication. You have to talk. You have to let people know what your expectations are. Let people know exactly where you stand and go from there. 
Now, this is one thing I'm going to say, and I'm going to kind of throw it uh, off topic a little bit. Um, when you're in those relationships, you're showing people that representative. Mm. Be careful of what you're showing them, because if you show that while you're dating, they're going to expect the same thing when you get married. Right. Why are you trying to put your best face forward? Guys, <laughs> we, we uh, guys, we do it all the time. Mm. We, we date the young lady. We pick them up early or on time. Mm -hmm. We got the car running warm. We open up doors uh, um, for the car when we go into the restaurant, when we go shopping. We, we're just a perfect gentleman. And then all of a sudden, when the ring gets on the thing, we stop doing all that. Mm. And it's just like, why don't you do it? Well, we married now. Like, right, yeah. right. And so you almost make it seem like it's a punishment. <laughs> no, that's what they do. But guess no, what? I'm just saying. And, that, it, and it goes it's the same it. way with yeah. women sometimes. Well, yeah. you know what? When we were uh, dating, you would dress sexy and wear this dress and this skirt and you look like this. Now, now I, I see you more in that rag around your head than I do anything else. <laughs> wow. And, and, and it, it goes both ways. <laughs> right. Guys, you know, you meet uh, a lady meets you, you're working out in the gym, you got all that tone. And then pretty soon you say, I can just let that go. Right. But then you get mad at her when she let herself go. Mm -hmm. You got to work together on this thing. That's true. You got that's work, true. and that's why communication and expectations, talking about that is so important in that single aspect so that when you do get married, everything continues to flow in that same right, way. Right, right, My right, wife right. and I, I, I continue, I, I still believe that we're still the same. Right. I told her I was serious. Uh, I'm going to let you know I'm a nut, uh, but I can be a fool. Mm -hmm. uh, I can go off the deep end, and she's probably seen all the different faces of King and King in these 24 years. Right. But we talk and we communicate, and that's what made us get on that boat to say, okay, yeah, we're both uh, single at this point. Right. Where are we moving to? This is where I want to go. Well, all right, well, if you're serious about it, I'm serious about it, well, let's go ahead and do this thing. We got serious about it. The ring came, the marriage came, the kids came, and everything else has been coming right along with that. Right, right, The right. question I would beg to uh, ask people is, what title do you really want? Mm, be honest about be the honest title about that it. you really want. Be honest Come about on, that title sir. that you really want. If you mm. would desire to be married, carry yourself in that manner. And then when it comes along, you're already ready for it. Right. But if you want to live that single lifestyle, don't pull nobody else down that road when right. that's not what they want. Be single. Right, right. And, right. and I've said it before, when you go back and you study the Bible and you talk about Ruth, mm -hmm. everybody always talk about, well, you know, I'm single. I'm just waiting on my Boaz. Well, number one, go back and read them scriptures. Right, 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 right. She wasn't waiting. She was working. She was working. So come you on, keep doing on. what you do. And if someone is there, they're going to see you in the fields doing what you're going to do. And they will inquire about you. Come on. Come on with the inquiry. They, they will inquire yes. about you. Okay. And not only would they inquire when they make up their mind, well, hey, I'm going to let my God be your God. That, that, was, that went deep for some people mm -hmm. right there. But those are some of the things that I believe that we have to do while we're in that single um, mind state. Right. When you get in that marriage mind state, it becomes a totally different game. Yes. A lot of different things out there that you're going to have to really work to get on the same sheet of music, the ops pulling the same way. Uh, we, we have rules that we're going to follow or rules we're not going to follow, whatever the case may be for your particular marriage, what works for you. But the most important thing I would tell individuals when you make up your mind that you're getting married, make up your mind that you're getting married. Right. Prepare not only yourself, but the other individuals that are around you that you're leaving and cleaving. Right, 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 right. Because right. a lot of times what we'll do when we're single, we got a problem with our boyfriend, fiance, whatever, we'll run back to mom and dad and be like, bye, 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 this, that, that. I can't believe he doing this, that, and the other. Oh, when you get married, that's all that's supposed to stop. Mm. You just leave and cleave. Mm. So now mm. you got to work your own stuff out. Right. Now, this last thing I say, I know I've been on a rant before. We have, <laughs> we, we have to understand the correlation of what God considers to be a, a relationship marriage-wise. If you go back all the way to Genesis, when you had Adam in the garden by himself doing all the work, naming all the animals, God said it's not good for man to be alone. Right. He caused Adam to go to sleep, took a rib, made Eve. And technically, at that particular point, he is presenting the husband, I mean, the wife to her husband. Mm. In other words, the father is giving away the daughter for someone to marry. Mm. We have to understand in, in today's society, that same thing still goes. God wanted the woman to be presented to a man in holy matrimony by the father. You get it? Jesus, the God, the father gave it over to Adam. In this uh, uh, area that we're living in now, it doesn't seem like that happens a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, 
And for whatever reason, I think we got to need to go back to those biblical principles. Right. Not saying that nobody's going to be perfect. I can't sit here and tell you that I've been any better than her. She's been better than me. We both sinned and fell short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. But how are we really going to work this thing for the glory of God? Right, right, God, right. I recognize I'm single. Mm -hmm. I've been wanting a man to come. I'm putting my faith and my trust in you. Not in Club Chocolate, not in Sin City, not in Atlanta, not in whatever. I'm mm -hmm. putting my trust in you mm -hmm. to bring me from this single stage to this marriage stage. Mm -hmm. And if I'm in that marriage stage, God, I need you to work with me and my mind so I don't go back to that single. Somebody didn't catch that. Come on, don't come let on. me go back to that single stage right, unless, right, unless right. it's for reasons that's marked out in, in the Bible. Right. And so communication, understanding, um, Talking about what our expectations are, I think will help divide those individuals out to let you know what title do I really need to hold in this relationship. Mm, 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 mm. And, you know, I'm going to share this just sitting up thinking about it, because, of course, before we come on the show, um, before we typically do anything, you know, as we were taught growing up in church, examine yourself, mm -hmm. any word or any any, you know, thing that you speak for others. Is you always need to examine yourself first. And so what I would encourage singles, those who are engaged, even those that are married, what is your relationship like with God? Because for those who believe, we are believers of God. We are believers that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and is the son of God. For those who believe, is are you allowing God to walk beside you and with you in this process? It, are you allowing God to convict you in your spirit when you're doing something that you don't have no business doing? Okay. And I'm only speaking from example. I would go to God. I've shared that with you all. God, now this man is serious about me. Even when I wasn't even serious about myself, come on, that hit somebody. This man is serious about me when I wasn't even serious about myself. So with that being said, do you allow God to walk alongside of you? Do you truly allow God to order your steps? When this guy says, hey, I think we need to move in together. How am I supposed to know if you the one, if we don't live together? How am I supposed to know if you the one? These are the things I've heard in this day and time. Let's just keep it honest. Let's keep it a buck. How am I supposed to know if you the one, if we're not sleeping together? Because, and I've heard women say this too. You know, I know this is a family show. But y'all use y'all's minds, y'all growing up, y'all know, how am I supposed to know it? Wait a minute. What are you basing your marriage off of though? Mm. That's the question. If you are single and you desire to be married, what are you basing it off of? Allow God to order your steps. Allow God to lead you through the process. Shan, did you? I did. I sure did. I shared with y'all. I prayed. I had doubt. God showed me signs, all the things. I'm going to be honest with you. I was scared. <laughs> I was scared. And my thing was this. I wanted to be married. And I told my husband this when we were, before we even got married, I wanted to be married. I always wanted to be married, desire to be married and have my own family. My thing was, I told my husband, I said, when we get married, I don't want to get divorced. That's what I told him. I just, I want it to be a marriage. I'm serious about that thing. I do not want to get divorced. We had that conversation. I think a lot of people, especially those who are single and you're designed to be married, those of you who are married, you did this. And that's probably why you ended up where you are in your marriage state right now. Not trying to beat anybody up because God can make that thing better. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me share that. We know what God is able and capable of doing, but we have to follow his directions. We have to follow his guidance and his wisdom and those who we pray and God allow people to come around us and say, wait a minute now, you might want to consider this. Mm -hmm. You may want to think, see, this is the thing. While we're single, we don't hear, want to hear nothing that anybody have to say, even if we are praying and God got them signs ablazing, them red flags are on fire. Mm -hmm. But no, we, I desire to be a wife so bad. So you just, oh, it's going to change when we get married. That's a lie. Don't lie to yourself. It's going to amplify and get worse if you don't address it. That's why we always encourage those to go to pre marital counseling mm -hmm. okay because it's gonna bring out all the things that need to be discussed before you say i do don't wait because see a lot of people now you wait you get into marriage and you you don't even go to no counseling you say whoop on to the next that's what this society is made mm -hmm. of but how is god going to get the glory 
of our process. How are we going to say, Kenya and I can set up and share with you all our testimony of what we, we've been through so that a way it can help somebody else. That's what a testimony is for. We've been through the test. Now we're able to testify mm-hmm. about the goodness of God. A lot of people are rolling with what society say and we're putting God on the back burner mm-hmm. and we're wondering why things aren't working. So while you are praying, and this is what we do towards the end of the show, while you are praying, you know, God is ordering your steps. You asking God questions and clarifying questions. Make sure like Kenya and I have been saying throughout this broadcast, make sure that you communicate with the person you're with. If they tell you, because this is the thing, ladies, let me talk to the ladies real quick. Yo dude, your man may tell you, I'm not ready to get married. But sometimes women and men both can be manipulators. But let's talk mm-hmm. from a woman's perspective. Sometimes you're going to try to manipulate him to get what you want. But then when it don't turn out the way that you thought that it should be, you mad at God. You t- And God ain't had nothing to do with that because God is not the author of confusion. And he is not a manipulator. Okay. So with that being said, you get mad at the man. Sis, he told you up front, I'm not ready to be in a marriage, but you still move in with him. You still have his children. You still trying to do all this convincing behavior, thinking that it's going to change his mind. Like Kenya said, a man knows what he wants. Okay. So quit trying to manipulate. Go on ahead, be a roof. Go on ahead about your business. You work because trust and believe while you chasing this one, the one you've been praying for might be over there. Okay. So what we tend to do as a people is we get in God's way. Hmm. Let's sit in there for a minute. Mm-hmm. We get in God's way, but yet we get m- mad at God when things don't turn out the way that we should, that we think it should. So bottom line, Shin, are you single to you? Be- I believe you are. You are, but you are committing yourself. Now, there is one person who said, and I quote, this is what she said. I'm old school. If you're in a relationship with someone, you're not single anymore. I'm just saying. Again, like we said, If you have the conversation and both of you had committed to that relationship because you think that is going somewhere potentially, then okay. But all I'm saying is don't throw all your eggs in one basket. Y'all jumping in, moving in and all this. And then you big mad him or her that is 20 years later and y'all still not married. Mm -hmm. What was your conversation like? I'm just saying. Yeah. And you know, um, I've always been one of those individuals that, you know, people used to say uh, when I grew up that I'm from Missouri, Mm -hmm. I'm from the show me state, you got to show me, show me. And so when it comes to this topic of single until you're married, I'm gonna need somebody to show me something. Mm. If if I'm single, then I'm gonna be single until you show me that we need to be married, or you can handle that married aspect. Right, 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 right. Reminded of, um, I'll just go out there and say it, uh, you know, back in the day, one of my favorite rappers was was DMX. Mm -hmm. And he had sat down and he did an interview uh, with a uh, guy on the radio. And he said, always trust everyone to show you themselves. Mm. Trust everyone Mm. to show you themselves. Sometimes people are showing you that they are marriage material right in front of you. The problem is that's not really what you want at that particular time. Wow. You have a lot of individuals, and and I'm going to go back and forth, men and women. You have a lot of men who are really trying to be a man, but that ain't really what the woman wants. Mm. Are you a punk? Are you acting this way? Why are you up in church every Sunday? Why you got to go with this organization and be helping out in the community? What about me here with my kids, this, that, and the other? Mm. And then when that you beat them up for so long because he's trying to be that man because that ain't really what you want then when you get ready then he's already back out in the streets again because that's what the, that's the road you led him down. right Ooh. that's what you told him that you really wanted mm-hmm. same thing with with men well you know what uh i want somebody that can settle down and have kids with and this that and the other that's what i really want mm-hmm. but then what i need you to do is to dress like this i want you to get drunk with me all the time blah 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 this that and other then when you start doing that and you go get with somebody else he's sitting there acting stupid like why Mm, 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 so mm. trust individuals to show you who they really are to show you themselves right, 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 i right. guarantee you and i know this is something that god has been dealing with me in for a number of months now i'm just going to be honest with it okay sometimes even i get to the point where i always give everybody the benefit of the doubt mm-hmm. always trusting everybody else to come around and do and do and do and that don't always work right they've already shown me what they are what yes. they're like why yes. can't i see it for myself i need to trust what i've already been shown mm. so you all we hope that you all you know got something good out of tonight's show 
um, like we were saying, show me, mm -hmm. <laughs> show me. So I'm just going to close it out with saying this, allow God to mm -hmm. order your steps. That's it. When something doesn't feel right in your spirit, trust God, go into prayer and ask God to show you what is this? If you got nothing else out of the show, communicate with the person. Don't be so hasty to jump into a title. Mm -hmm. Be honest about what you want, especially if you are age or older. Baby, we don't have time to be playing games. I desire to be married. Is that something that you desire? Oh, you don't? Oh, okay. Well, let's just go ahead for a time and just be friends. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be friends and keep it pushing. Okay? Because a lot of times, the person that you've been praying for, like I said, God already have lined up for you, but you block it. Mm -hmm. And then you got people, well, I, I don't really want you. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. I don't really want you, but I don't want to see you with nobody else. You so go. they string you along. That's it. That is not of God. God is not the author of confusion. Okay. So anywho, we keep going about this, but let's go ahead and close out the show. Yeah. And so we want to go ahead and give you our thought of the week. And the thought of the week comes from right here at Marriage Mondays with the Kings. Yes. And it reads, be careful about playing like you are married when you are single. Mm -hmm. I'll add something to that. Come be on, careful sir. about acting single when you're married. Uh-oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. 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 Home. That that'll be another show for another day. <laughs> but anyway, thank you. Thank you all so much for joining us for Marriage Mondays with the Kings. We want to let you know about our amazing sponsors we have christian humor for slash inspiration this is a group that is designed to uplift inspire and bring humor to everyday life if you are in the social media please check them out simply by going to search them on facebook at christian humor for slash inspiration do you desire individual, relational, premarital, or marriage counseling? Are you thinking about starting your counseling journey to becoming a better you? Ear to Hear Counseling and Consulting can help. They offer telehealth services across the state of Texas, therapy in the comforts of your own environment. They are now accepting clients. Visit their website at eartoheercounseling.com or call 254 450 2950 start today and let us be your ear to hear and if you are an organization or a business and you would like to be promoted during our broadcast of marriage mondays with the kings or on krg and 98.5 fm put their website go to the contact us on the website mykrgn.com or call 254-213-1588 we want to thank you so much for joining us for another show of Marriage Mondays with the Kings. If you would like to contact us, get in contact with us, please go to our website, marriagemondayswiththekings.com. Click that contact us tab. And if you got any topics or anything that you would like to be shared, please share it there to get directly in contact with us. Please do not go into our inbox of our social media platforms because there are too many. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. We ask that you will be back next Monday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And as always, keep it locked right here on KRGN 98.5 FM, The, the Rock. Rock.